I just finished reading Church of Lies by Flora Jessup. Jessup belonged to the same clan as Carolyn Jessup and Eliza Wall. All three were part of the Mormon sect that would eventually be run by the creepy Warren Jeffs. Flora's biological father molested Flora when she was only eight years old. The abuse continued for years even after she was impregnated by him at around the age of 12. She was forced to undergo a crude coat hanger type abortion by her sadistic Aunt Lydia, who was the town birthing nurse. At one point about this time, Flora took a ride on her favorite horse up to the mountains to die with the, in, the, the intent on committing suicide. She slid her wrist with an old rusty sharp tool she took from her father's toolkit. As she lay bleeding and waiting for death, she slipped in and out of consciousness and was saved by an old native who sealed her wound with mud and gave her a hot drink. After this, she ran away uh, for the first time and ended up in Vegas, but inexperience with the outside world made her frightened and lonely. She called home and was picked up and brought to her Uncle Fred's, who uh, was also the husband of Flora's crazy Aunt Lydia. When Flora got back to the colony, she was imprisoned for two years by Lydia in a small closet-sized room. She was only allowed out to help Lydia in the birthing center. Flora describes the horror she saw of babies born dead and or with severe birth defects. The stillborn, stillborn were buried in the backyard as the mother lay in bed recovering from her or ordeal. Flora was also forced to do the laundry and clean for 12 hours a day and uh, then sent back to her cell. Because of the constant marriages between cousins in the community, it had one of the highest rates in the world of a rare genetic defect, which can cause mental retardation, seizures, and other various defects. Like the other books I've read on polygamy, this book, too, featured stories of the jealous nature of the sister wives, their vying for their husband's affection, and the cruel way the first wife treats the other incoming sister wives. Flora's mother was an exception to this. She was ill-treated by both her husband and his new wife. He and his new wife would have sex in the adjacent bedroom off from the kitchen, and the sounds of passion could be heard through the door. Flora's mother grinned and bared it because the women in the cult are told to be obedient and keep sweet no matter what. Flora's mother was submissive, passive, and did what her husband and the priesthood told her to, even when it might harm her children. When Flora ran away a second time, she was caught by her father and a cousin and was told that she would either be put in a men mental institution or marry her first cousin, Philip Jessup, who she had been caught talking to earlier. Just talking to a member of the opposite sex in the community when you're not married is considered scandalous and taboo, hence the reason she was told to marry him. The middle of the book deals with the lost years as she ran away again and got mixed up in a seedy nightlife of doing drugs and working in strip clubs and getting pregnant by a biker who lacked the maturity for fatherhood. She gave birth to a girl she calls Shauna. She also tells of a harrowing experience in the back alleys of Vegas, getting roughed up by a potential rapist. She fought him off with a knife she kept for protection. The man was later caught exhibiting the cut, the cut uh, wounds that Flora inflicted but she was not apprehended because the police saw it as self-defense. She met her future husband and settled down, but her, her life became hectic again when she got a desperate call from her youngest sister, Ruby, who was uh, set to marry a middle-aged man with several wives. The last part of the book deals with how she got involved with helping to rescue the, run, the young runaways from the cult and the legal battles 
she had to fight against with the district attorney's office, Department of Corrections, and the Child Protection Service. Many runaways were treated like delinquents and then eventually sent back to the very situation they ran away from. If you want to learn the reality of Mormon fundamentalist cults and polygamy, this is a good read. Flora war um, warns near the end that it's definitely not like the series Big Love or anything seen on reality TV shows. In fundamentalist Mormon communities, women have no rights. Children suffer through poverty and are used as child labor and often abused. Most men need government assistance to take care of their huge families. They use a term which Carolyn Jessup also used in her book for the reliance of government assistance. They call it bleeding the beast.